We're back with The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. At this point, we'll be looking at the pages of a national daily. We call it Off the Press. Ambrose Igboke joins us this morning. Thank you for joining us, Good Ambrose. Good morning. All right, Den. Yes, good to have you. Uh, we'll start off with the leadership newspaper and uh, looking at the leadership, it talks about the 2023 elections. 2023 polls concerns as INEC tracks hundreds of PVCs to individuals. Uh, according to that report, they have been arrested and apprehended. Two persons found with 468 voters cat in Sokoto, uh, that's Kano. So the question will be how, how? How, how did that happen? We're prosecuting them, says electoral body, and promises seamless collection of PVCs. Peter B supports oil exploration in Northeast. Abuja Kaduna train service won't resume today. Wow, that's what the minister is quoted to say. Well, that's the much we will take this morning on the leadership newspaper. Let's go next uh, to uh, the Punch newspaper with the following headlines. Uh, very interesting ones. Fuel scarcity, NNPC petrol price without subsidy is 400 naira per litre. Marketers, this NNPC petrol price without subsidy is 400 naira per litre. I think the marketers are uh, referring to what they get from the NNPC, which is by far the uh, sole importer, <laughs> importer of petrol into the country. Uh, right as to that, oil firms struggling with subsidies. Government cannot be Father Christmas. Ipman, NMPC, NMDPRA, keep mum. Not a word from them since the queues resurfaced. Over 30,000 filling stations face shortage. More from the punch. And this was something that uh, he promised to do and he has done it. A delicate reverses Oyetola's, Oyetola's appointment says... Action malicious. I think uh, if you recollect, he appointed 30 permanent secretaries, barely 48 hours to his departure as governor of, Oyos, of uh, Ocean State. He's talking about uh, Oyetola. More from the punch. Um, election results nationwide e transmission possible, says Telcos. Saudi bound trafficker conceals cocaine in sandals and Yuletide and CDC warns a possible COVID-19 infection rise. Uh, some of the stories on the front page of The Punch. Well, let's quickly take a look at the Daily Trust newspaper. The Daily Trust says anti-money laundering, SMEs, SMEs decry registration hurdles. Account opening process frustrating, uh, business owners are saying, and banks reject applications. SCUML procedures not cumbersome, EFCC is saying. Finance Ministry denies budget padding. Importers kick as cost of containers from China increases by 2.6 million naira. And Kaduna Abuja train federal government shift resumptions, uh, malls fair hike. INEC, a Boeing office raised. 340 ballot boxes, others destroyed. Change of baton name as Adelike takes charge of Oshun. And uh, that's it this morning on uh, the Daily Trust newspaper. The Punch has the following headlines. A big one there, 2023, another attack on INEC. Office raises concern over polls. Uh, 2023, another attack on INEC. Office raises concern over polls. Um, IG orders CPs to take action. Uh, commission seeks probe into attacks on facilities. You know, uh, quite a number of these attacks popping up in recent times. Disquiet in Customs Services. Top officers seek tenor extension. So it's not just uh, the National Assembly Service Commission. We're seeing uh, these tenor extension uh, ambitions. We have more from the nation. Adelike. I will strengthen security, boost workers' welfare. Tidibu, most experienced candidate, says Ayade, that's governor of uh, Cross River State. Azura targets uh, 3,500 megawatts power generation. Morocco's win over Belgium through Zokocha, quite a, a very welcome second win for an African country in the Angola World Cup. Federal government bans export of raw gold. 
six plants underway in Ibadan, Kanu, other cities, and see what comes out uh, of that. And uh, at this point, we will uh, welcome our guests once again. Ambrose Boke, thank you very much uh, for your time. Let's start with that big story on the front page of the nation. Um, talking about the attacks on INEC offices, you know, uh, nationwide, with the paper saying that an attack on another INEC uh, office yesterday has raised fresh concerns over the uh, safe conduct of next year's general uh, election. Um, so, so what, what are your thoughts on this? Is something at play here, Ambrose Ibuke, or think these are just itinerant uh, mm -hmm. attacks? First of all, let it be clear that so many people are afraid of the giant strides made by INEC towards the 2023 election with the deployment of technologies like the beavers. Uh, increasingly, it's becoming clear that snatching of ballot boxes during elections or after people have cast their ballot papers can no longer hold. It's almost a point, uh, an exercise in futility because it's where the results will be transmitted as the polling units. So, with this electronic transmission of results, uh, the naysayers who do not want us to have credible uh, elections are devising new means to thwart the elections and ensure that the election is rigged even before it is held. And that is why you are seeing a lot of these attacks. Uh, because it is not everybody that wishes election to be credible, free, and fair. There are some elements in the polity that favors, uh, you know, the old ways of rigging, of uh, declaring um, voters that are more than people in the uh, uh, voters' register of ballot uh, snatching, declaring fake results, and the rest. They are increasingly getting frustrated with the fact that these uh negative activities may not be able to happen again so they have resorted to burning INEC of uh, offices what they hope to achieve is to see whether they can cause some uh, maximum damage to INEC uh, facilities especially the technologies the beavers which they presume is uh, housed in INEC offices uh, with these attacks you can see that a lot of uh, voter cards will be destroyed and then a lot of uh, uh, you know, the instruments for work that are in INEC offices may also be destroyed. And so that is the new attack system. And uh, with this, the security agencies should tighten, you know, uh, more security as the INEC offices, especially the state uh, offices in the capitals, and also see how they can prevent INEC offices from getting attacked in local government. It is a big uh, cause for concern, and all Nigerians, especially security agents, should rise above the board and ensure that these attacks are prevented. But should 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 should, uh, should we concerned uh, for the safety of INEC staff and the safety of electoral materials in next year's election, going by what we're seeing playing out over the past few months? Uh, for every election in Nigeria, we're always concerned about that because, as Ilya said, some people do not want uh, credible elections to hold. Because if it, if it happens, uh, they are deprived of uh, the negative ways in which they uh, get things done. Uh, so uh, what uh, I next should do is to ensure, because there's a paradigm shift in this 2023 election. The materials for election are more sensitive before the election. You know, before now, before what was happening is that the electoral materials, especially the ballot papers, are more sensitive after the election, because people go to snatch them and then stop fake uh, uh, ballot papers and then declare fake results. But now, because of beavers and the electronic transmission of results from the un polling units, what the people, the evil, evil people would do is to devise a means of seeing how to hijack the electoral material before the election uh, as the electoral officers are moving to the polling units. And that is to be where heavier security should be deployed. So that uh, as they're moving the beavers, as they're moving the uh, ballot boxes and the rest, they should make sure that enough security is provided. There's always fear of attack on INEC officers during election because ours is a democracy. 
where thuggery and uh, electoral violence still hold sway. So uh, there are fears, as usual, but um, when we deploy the correct tactical operation to ensure preventive strikes, then we ensure that uh, such attacks are minimized. Mm. Okay, let's move away from that. Although I've wondered and continue to wonder why uh, we haven't been on top of the situation, acting very proactive, despite all of the recent attacks that we've had, probably will not be the first in 2022. It's happened over the years and, and we're still here. So uh, there might just also be another attack in recent times. I mean, this, this we're just saying. But um, on the Punch newspaper, it talks about fuel scarcity, NMPC and petrol price without subsidies going to be 400 naira per litre. This is according to the marketers, and maybe we're talking about the pump price now, not the black market. Also, uh, just during the week, you have the oil marketers saying that we should anticipate buying petrol at any price. I'd like to share your thoughts on this. First of all, Nigeria has no business buying petrol uh, PMS at above 40 naira or 50 naira. Second of all, it is a failure of for successive governments, especially in the last 25 years, that we cannot refine our own crude oil in Nigeria. When we were refining our oil in Nigeria in the 70s and 80s, even to the early 90s or mid 90s, where we were doing full refining of petroleum products in Nigeria, where we had our Three giant refineries, Wari, Portacot, Kaduna. There was nothing like subsidy on petroleum products because we were refining them here. The petrochemical industry earlier mentioned uh, where, where came up because of that. Ascon, that is the fertilizer company, also came up from uh, uh, that. Uh, manufacturing offshoot you know, products from ancillary products from the refining petrol provided thousands of jobs. We have no business with uh, uh, subsidy then because we're refining locally. I want to, people to understand that the subsidy in petroleum products we are talking about is a function of the government's failure to refine products locally. So what they do is they export crude oil, go to another country, shamelessly refine products and then bring back those products, refined products, to Nigeria and ask Nigerians or first Nigerians to buy those products at international market prices. So governments that were responsible, governments over the years felt that we have failed our people. We are supposed to refine locally, but we are not doing it. Therefore, we have to question the effects of, of the volatility or the differences between the international price and the local price in which our people were supposed to buy. Therefore, we need to subsidize because the, par the disparity of international price and local price is a function of failure of government. So government knows it failed the citizens, and that is why it started subsidizing petroleum products, the price of petroleum products in Nigeria. So having said that, I reiterate, and I said it in several forums, that subsidy must remain because the citizens cannot bear the brunt of failure of government to refine petroleum products in Nigeria. Now, the problem is not subsidy because even the greatest nations of the world subsidize the citizens, subsidize healthcare, they subsidize agriculture, they subsidize a lot of things. We are quick to, you know, compare prices of pump prices with America in other countries. We have not provided the infrastructure. Do the Americans run, run well in their generator? Do they use petroleum products? Do they have, a, do, do they have one means of transportation the so way we but, do but here? But could be responsible for, you know, the shortage that we're experiencing in different parts of the country the, at the, the time? The shortages are employed by marketers always. There's a system to it. The shortages are during Christmas time, during festive time. It, is, it has become a, a, a normal for us to uh, make petroleum products scarce and then you increase the prices. The problem with subsidy is not the, the subsidy itself, it is the fraud in the subsidy. Instead of government trying an excuse to remove subsidy and putting the citizens in hardship, 
the government should find a way to remove the fraud in the subsidy. Because that is what we are having. So the question, the answer is not to remove subsidy entirely. It is to remove the fraud in the subsidy. Until the government is able to have functional refineries or engender policies that ensure that we have uh, modular refineries and investments in the refinery sector by individuals, there must, it is the duty of government to subsidize petroleum products for its citizens because it has failed to refine it locally. Therefore, I, the citizens have been, you know, very passive about this. I remember when people were trying to remove subsidy in 2012, there was a lot of riot against uh, the government of uh, 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 Jonathan. And then it was reversed. It's unfortunate that we, we are keeping quiet from 65, uh, from the 65 naira to 19 naira to 145 to 165. We are now buying at two, over 200 naira. And some people still have the ability to tell us that we 400 naira. What has been the uh, increase in the income of uh, the average Nigeria? So, but again, the Nigerian citizen is just silent. There's no outcry anywhere. So the people will do what they want to do and get away with it. That right, is who uh, we are. Ambrose, let, let's move on quickly to another story. A very, very sad situation indeed. Uh, the next uh, one I'd like us to talk about, take your thoughts on, is from the Punch newspaper. Um, yesterday, uh, uh, Oshobo and other parts of um, Oshobo State were agog uh, as the, the new governor, a delicate dancing senator, uh, now has become the dancing governor, having been sworn in as the governor of Washington State following his victory in the elections. Um, but he made a promise before he became governor. Uh, just over, I think on Friday, he promised to sack uh, all of the 30 um, permanent secretaries appointed, promoted uh, by the outgoing governor, who did so, Oyetola, barely 48 hours to, till he left uh, uh, office. Well, he hasn't sacked them, but he has reversed the appointments. Um, what are your thoughts on this, looking at what the civil service uh, uh, rules say? Well, first of all, he's not the dancing governor yet, because he has not danced as a governor. <laughs> so we can still be calling him the dancing senator. All right. uh, but for, it is only, uh, it's only commonsensical that he should reverse such appointments. Because it is evil that you are leaving office in the next 48 hours and you must promote people in the civil service. Why didn't you do that in your first year in office or second year in office or even third year in office? You waited 48 hours to hand over. You now want to cause crisis for the incoming governor. I mean, politicians should stop this kind of things. It, 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 is, uh, it, it is not, uh, it, more, it's not even ethical to do such a thing, that you are handing over in the next 48 hours, you suddenly increase, uh, uh, promote that mass number of people, not to even the small position, permanent secretaries. Where is the appropriation in the budget for, for next year? Did he put it in his budget for next year, uh, appropriation bill for such promotion? Where is the money going to be sourced from? So it is good that... Uh, the governor even made the announcement that uh, those who, have, uh, who you know, uh, uh, collect that appointment uh, will be sacked. But I think he has been advised accordingly, and it is okay by the way he has reversed it. Uh, so we look forward to a better option. Uh, we pray for the citizens of Oshun State. I will, uh, we wish uh, Governor Adeleke a successful uh, tenure. Uh, the, the, you know, overall you know, believe is that uh, having coming from the well-to-do family, uh, that he, will, he will should not be a grabbing uh, person, but rather use the connection of the family, the wealth of the family, the experience in private business, and other things to better the lots of uh, people of Osho. So we wish him well, and may Osho be better for it. Okay, uh, let's quickly delve into the issue of the elections uh, 2023 polls. The Association of Telecommunication Companies have assured Nigerians uh, that the deployment of biometric voter accreditation system and electronic transmission of results for the 2023 elections uh, are possible with the quality of telecom architecture available in the country and so the possibility of having that result being transmitted. But I'd like to ask you with the current reality of, you know, uh, tele services that Nigerians are receiving, including yourself, uh, from these telecommunication companies, do you think that, uh, that this is really possible? 
Nigeria is ripe for electronic transmission of results. Nigeria is ripe even for electronic voting. I don't, I don't know why they didn't include the electronic voting in the electoral act of 2022. But Nigeria is, uh, you know, ripe for it. When I say electronic voting, it doesn't mean that everybody must vote through the electronic means. Even in the United States, where they are doing electronic voting in a massive proportion, people still do physical ballot balloting. So uh, it would have had that mixed breed that I can sit in my house and vote, just like the way, you know, I, you know, uh, changed my polling booth, uh, polling unit, and uh, transferred my uh, card, my voting card, from Lagos to Enugu. I did it uh, in the comfort of my sitting room. I didn't need to go to INEC office or whatever, and it was successfully done. I transferred it from Surulere to GRA in Enugu. So that is how, you know, these voting things could be done so easily. So if such technology is available, and they are available, why have we not been able to do that? So for people who are saying that we are not right for mere transmission of, uh, electronic transmission of results, I think it's false. No, no, but, we are but right uh, for it. Ambrose, okay, that's not the, that's not the issue right here. Uh, the, the, the issue is that you have the Association of Telecommunication Companies assuring Nigerians that with the architecture that they have on ground, that they will ensure that uh, we have uh, a hitch-free transmission of results and what have you. And I'm saying that if we juxtapose that with the quality of services that we're receiving from these telecommunication companies, uh, do you think that that's even anything to go by? Should we believe it's what they're saying? Yes, it's something to go by. We don't even need the assurances. We know it's working. Uh, most part but, of but the Nigeria, services that you receive from this, uh, com uh, I, I know that you patronize, I don't know what uh, you know, company that you use, but do you well, think that with that? Well, 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 we are having this interview via what? It's still not via data. We are having this conversation now, video, as if I'm your studio, uh, through uh, the quality of uh, the fidelity of transmission and communication of uh, 4G, and we are even opening it to the 5G. There are still 3G working, there are 2G in some places, and the transmission of these results are not basically serious, uh, they are not video, they are just uh, uh, pictures that will not take a lot of uh, 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 mega space. And then there is no local government or local government headquarters, or local government in Nigeria that does not connect to the uh, national uh, uh, GSM uh, architecture. Anybody saying that is not saying the truth. When you go to the villages, a lot of the villages have the POS system where they do transactions. It is powered by, uh, by telecoms. When we, we, we USSD codes and all those things, even during the time of uh, uh, addition as agricultural minister, we remember that the farmers were giving phones that they were using in the rural areas, in the thick bushes, to communicate where they need fertilizers. And fertilizers are given to them uh, uh, free. They were giving phones. And so this technology can work. And we can only start it and then begin to improve on it. But uh, it is mischievous to say that uh, because of the fidelity uh, of some glitches uh, that are accompanying uh, communication uh, in Nigeria through the GSM, that uh, we cannot transmit, uh, electronically transmit results. Well, Most part of Nigeria can. Okay, so I like the fact that you say most part because I have, you know, been involved in monitoring these elections, especially in these very remote places. And one of the challenges is having, you know, a smooth connection. Just to try to have uh, communication is usually almost impossible because we don't have the presence. It's not everywhere. Uh, no, and what, that's the truth. Happens, uh, what, what happens sometimes is that, you know, there are interior places where the network is not in every, almost every part of the country. But so, 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 time, so how do we now transmit the local government headquarters? You see, nothing is cast off. So if you have those places, then they'll move to the nearest maybe local government headquarters to do the transmission. We cannot have a perfect situation, but we cannot discuss a progressive uh, method of doing things because a few people will be affected. So what they can do is if there's no network, you move to the closest place where there are network. Mostly, most local government headquarters have network. So you go to the nearest place and transmit your results electronically. The idea is that you don't start uh, having people going to polling units or collision centers and altering results. So you go to the nearest place that you have that can push it to the INET center uh, database, central database. So, does, the the, so, so within that period, does it not allow for compromise? Because it's supposed to be an instant process. 
well, if I isolated, if we can, we can risk isolated cases as against not using it at all and uh, risking the entire country. So these isolated cases, the percentage is minimal. Well, uh, we, we have to call it a wrap down. Thank you so much, uh, Ambrose. Okay, we have to go. We appreciate your thoughts and we look forward to sharing it as we proceed in the course of the week. Thank you very much for having me. All right, we'll be back. And of course, we start with the first major conversation. We'll be looking, of course, at um, the issues surrounding the Chief Justice of Nigeria and his association with the G5 group of governors led by Yesun Wiki. Stay with us. We'll be right back.